Hi there, I'm Jen, this is Remembered Reads, and this is going to be a bit of a library book haul, plus a couple of books that I bought. I have a stack of library books out right now, and there's no way I'm going to read them all before they're due, so I thought I might as well talk about them beforehand. Dirty Work by Anna Maximov. This is a memoir of a summer that she spent working at a fly-in, fly-out site. I think as a chambermaid at a hunting lodge up in northern Ontario. I was reading a newspaper article recently about memoirs of this kind of job. Uh, not necessarily the kind of cleaning at a hunting lodge type job, but people who do the planting trees over the summer type jobs or some of the fly-in, fly-out oil sands type thing. So I thought I'd pick this up because it's a slightly different tone just because the tree planting and the oil sand stuff are so much more highly paid than this kind of job is, even though lifestyle-wise it's very similar, being in a fly-in, fly-out site. So yeah, I'll be curious to read that. Next up I have Anthony Satin's The Young T.E. Lawrence, which I picked up mostly because um, after having read the Robert Graves biography a couple of weeks ago, I was thinking about a book that I ha own but haven't read yet that is a different biography of T.E. Lawrence, and I mean I've read too many biographies of T.E. Lawrence to begin with. I probably don't need to read this, but I'm curious to see what new stuff might be in here, especially because the book that I do own is in storage, so I'm not going to read that anytime soon. My understanding is that this covers basically his life before he became, you know, quote-unquote Lawrence of Arabia, so yeah. So I guess his pre-military life is the best way to describe that. Next up, I have Nancy Jo Collins' The Western Alienation Merit Badge, which I believe is set in Calgary in the 1980s and is a bit of a, a coming-of-age story that's also about a family growing together and apart and step-family issues and sexuality issues and whatnot. I, know, I was just kind of charmed by the fake Girl Guide badges on the cover with the like oil pumps and the record player and the Calgary skyline. So, I don't know. Next up I have Kia Brown's memoir, The Pretty One. I mean, her, I guess, claim to fame is that she created the hashtag disabled and cute. And I feel like so many of the memoirs I've been reading or realistically listening to lately have been people who are much more in the public sphere. Whereas I think she's kind of the more, a very modern public eye, kind of in the social media sense. So I thought that might be interesting. So I also picked up Frying Plantain by Zalika Reed Benta. This is, I think, about second and third generation Jamaican Canadians in like Eglinton West and Toronto, and is mostly a coming of age story with those kind of cultural elements, which, you know, is always my kind of thing. So uh, we'll see how that goes. Next up is Bernard Wolf's Limbo. This is a science fiction novel that was originally published back in the 50s. It's about a militaristic society in which, in which pacifists undergo multiple amputations and what that does to, to avoid being drafted, I think. Um, which is an interesting concept and I'm curious to see how both how the concept plays out but also how that ends up aging just because this is from the 50s so yeah i was digging through the sf masterworks library and i had never heard of this and uh it sounds like it's dealing with the kind of topics that i'm usually curious to see how that plays out in a science fiction setting and a lot of the books in the sf masterworks series i had heard of or had read whereas this wasn't even on my radar, so I'm curious. My hold for Colson Whitehead's The Nickel Boys finally came in. Everybody on booktube has talked about this, so I don't need to say a lot about it. I was a huge fan of Zone 1, his, which is his zombie novel, so I'm definitely curious to see how this more serious fiction plays out. Next up, I have a book that I originally took out of the library because I thought, oh, I'll read that during the Women in Translation readathon, and then I forgot to read it. Because <laughs> I kind of forgot that that read-along was... readathon? Because I kind of forgot that that readathon was happening. But this is The Baghdad Clock by Shahad al-Rawi and translated by Luke Leafgreen. And this is set in Baghdad in 1991 when that uh, the Americans had their first Gulf War. And it's about friendship in the backdrop of... with a backdrop of war, which is always interesting. Another book that I picked up and then forgot about the fact that the Women in Translation readathon was happening is uh, Svetlana Alexievich's Again Upon Visage de Femme, um, which in English is called The Unwomanly Face of War, I think. I, I took the original Russian title and I plugged it into Google Translate 
and the French title is closer to the original Russian title than the English title is, so I figured I'd pick up the French one. I don't know if that's a good reason to choose a translation or not. Uh, who translated this? It was translated by Galia Ackerman. I had read Voices from Chernobyl a couple of months ago and thought I ought to read more of Alexievich's writing. So this, I believe, is about female military personnel in the Soviet era. So this should be interesting. It, it's the same kind of thing in oral history where she's basically interviewing people but her part of the interview is left out. So I'll be curious to read this even though I didn't get to it during the <laughs> read-along that I actually picked it up for. Next up I have a graphic novel. This is Lauren Miracle's Under the Moon, which is a Catwoman book. I saw Jenna from Bibliophilth read this and hated it for basically the marketing because this is supposed to be a children's introduction to the character and she said it was incredibly grotesque for a children's book whereas you could put that in a different format and it would work but why would you do that in, in like an introductory book for kids so I was curious to see how this would be and I was intrigued by that disconnect between the way it's marketed and what it apparently actually is so that is why I picked this up. And finally I picked up G. Willow Wilson's The Bird King. This is I think set in medieval Spain and is a I was gonna say urban fantasy but historical fantasy I suppose it is. And I mean who doesn't like medieval Spain as a setting right? I kind of go back and forth with I mean G. Willow Wilson I think is best known for having written or created Ms. Marvel. Somebody else is writing it now. I read part of her memoir The Butterfly Mosque and it just and I wish I hadn't read it because I feel like I like her less as a author because I read that, which I wasn't a big fan of, but meh. Yeah, and I, which to be fair, I haven't actually, I didn't actually finish. I stopped reading that. But anyway, I'm curious to read something that is not a comic and not a memoir from her. So, so that's the pile of books that I have out of the library right now, but I also have a couple of books that I bought. The first of which is a book of short stories by Scholastique Mukasanga. This is Vashtaro Masinga, which is short stories set in Rwanda, because I recently read her memoir and I wanted to read more from her. And I also picked up a piece of franchise fiction, and this is Annihilation, which is a Mass Effect Andromeda tie-in. This is written by Catherine M. Valente, and I think it's great that they're getting name authors to write these tie-ins. I've talked about another one of these Mass Effect books a while ago, and that one was written by N.K. Jemisin, so I think it's kind of fun that they're both name authors and that they're people who were fans of the franchise <laughs> publicly prior to writing these. I think that's great fun. In any case, this is, if you're familiar with the Mass Effect universe, this is about the Quarian arc and what's happening to them in the background, because if you've played Mass Effect Andromeda, that it was kind of implied that that was going to be some DLC that never happened, but hey, we get a book about it, so I'm thrilled. I mean, I always take forever to read books that I actually own. I think on my currently reading list on Goodreads, there are, you know, a few books that I'm currently reading that are, I'm actually currently reading that are out of the library, and then there are a couple of books that I finished months ago, but because I own them, I'm not finishing them because all the library books take precedence, but I will get to these eventually. Anyway, if you've read any of these, I'd love to hear what you thought. And if you take too many books out of the library, I'd love to hear about that too. We can commiserate. Anyway, that's it for now. Ciao.